Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today, doing a little bit of follow-up, uh, making a couple of little parts to really kind of finish up this uh, compound cross slide that goes on my metal planer. Uh, when we put it back together, there was a little bit of hardware that I really needed to get it finished up, and I just didn't have time to do it as part of that video we did uh, last week. So uh, I am gonna go ahead and finish those up. So two things we need to make, um, actually three things with two parts, one of them we need twice. First off is uh, this little screw right here. I'll just zoom you in and show you this in a minute. Uh, but this is gonna be step one. Uh, this is what tightens up the gib on the cross slide. So this uh, goes up and down. And there's a get flat gib in here and these screws put pressure against that and that's how you adjust the gibs. This is an early version of a gib, really before they started making tapered gibs uh, like we use now. And Marianne wants to come say hello. Second thing we need to do is um, these two screws up here. And I caught a little crap from you guys. I didn't mention this in the video. No, I did not plan to leave these, uh, these modern looking screws in here. What really goes in here are, are two studs. There's two studs that come out and there is a big nut that goes on the end that tightens those up. And the reason for that is, is you don't want to be going in and out of the thread in the casting here because that will wear that thread out there. You would, would rather wear the, the, the stud and the nut out. And uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I don't have my studs yet. I'm gonna order a pair rather than making some. I gotta put in an order to McMaster car on Monday anyway. Yes, I see that. Uh, and, um, we'll, but we do wanna make the nuts that go on here. And uh, this is the same nut that I've made in a bunch of other places on this thing as well. So, if Mary Ann will let me get started, uh, we're going to get to work. Let's start with the screw. And uh, what we got here, the head on this is a little bit odd. So it's a uh, 550 uh, in diameter. I've got a piece of 5.8 uh, stock, 625, so we'll turn the head down. Now the thread is a 3 8 uh, inch diameter. And I believe that's going to be a standard 16 threads per inch. Use my thread gauge here. Yes, that is a 3.816. Okay. And there's just a little pointy thing down the end that just goes in there and presses against that gib. And we'll turn that in there as well. Let's go over to the lathe and we'll knock this part out first. All right, guys. Slight change of plans. I decided to use a little different piece of stock. This is a little bit thicker. This is three quarter inch thick rather than uh, five eighths, but that other piece was hot rolled and it's just hard to get a good finish on hot roll. This is a cold roll here. It just uh, cuts a lot better. All right, we're gonna take a hundred thou off of that. See where we're at, 640. So I got 90,000 more to go. I'm gonna do 80 and then we'll do a finished pass to get us down to the final bit. See where we're at now. I got 15 more thou to come off. Dial it in. All right, we're right there where we need to be. About a thou over, but we got plenty of room there. All right, next, let's uh, turn down the area for the threads. This needs to be 3.8, 375. We're at 550 right now. I'll just uh, turn down, turn a shoulder down to about right there. It's not critical measurement here, guys. You know, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And I'm not going to go to a bunch of trouble and try to hit a number exactly when it really just doesn't matter. So now we're going to take 100 thou.
continuing on here. I have about 75,000 more I need to take off of that. Let's see where we're at. We should be pretty close here. And we're within a thousand, so I think we're going to call that good. All right, let's uh, tell you what we'll do. We will go ahead and put the little feature on the end. Let me figure out what angle that is. I've got my compound set to 60 degrees. And uh, what we're going to do is just come in here and we'll put that point on the end. That's got it. All right, continuing on here, we need to turn a shoulder down here. It needs to be 275. We're at 375 right now, so about another 100 thou. I'm just going to do this in a couple of passes. All right, so we got about 55 more thou to go. Right on the money. Okay. Next up is going to be cutting our threads. So let me uh, get set up for threading here. And I think we're set up here. I'm going to start by just. Uh, chamfering this front edge, this leading edge of the uh, threads to kind of match the angle of the threads. I'll just make a nicer cutting thread. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and just touch off and we'll take a scratch pass to make sure we're on uh, right setting should be 16 threads per inch. And get a thread pitch gauge here and that matches. It's going to work just fine. I think we're good there. All right, let's uh, part it off. And we'll uh, put a parting tool in here. And we'll just cut that right off. Do want to put a little slight chamfer on the top there. So I'm going to change tools out here for a sec. Just kind of come in there and put a little, little chamfer on there, not much. Put my parting tool back in. And I put a zero over here on the indicator so I can go back to the exact same spot I was in, which is right there. And 
now we can continue parting that. There we go. I'll take that over to the grinder and uh, knock that little tit off the end, deburr it, and I think it'll be ready to put a slot in. Uh, before we do the sliding though, uh, I do want to go ahead and make those nuts. So let me get set up for that. All right, so to make our nuts, these are just going to be, turn out of some hex material. Uh, it's got a 5 8 what is that, 5 8 11 threads on the inside. And we got a little chamfer on the front here to just kind of make it smooth. The bottom is, is just more or less flat, although we're going to relieve the corners a little bit. So let's... Uh, Come in here, we'll start by facing the front of this. Doesn't need much. Okay, I'm gonna change cutters. That um, chamfer on there is the same angle as a thread. So I'm just gonna use a thread cutting tool here and we're just gonna come in and basically I just wanna take it back until it's making a circle all the way around. You see we got these little corners sticking out and I wanna cut that in until it's going all the way around uh, through here. So you go a little bit deeper. I think that's pretty much it right there. So yeah, I can see a circle all the way around the front. We just relieve those back a little bit. That just knocks those corners off, uh, makes it a little bit nicer to handle with the hand. Next thing I want to do is cut the uh, hole, drill the hole for the tap, and this is a 3564 drill bit. I've got a mark on there. That's how deep I want to go. And I've already, it, it's this. I've made nuts out of this piece before, so it's already basically got a center in there from the last hole I drilled. So uh, no need to put a center in there. We'll just kind of go right down the same, same path there. All right, that should be deep enough. Up next, we got the parting tool. And I'm just going to use the old part to kind of measure how deep I need to go. Again, this is not a critical measurement. And we will part this off. I'm going to work that bottom as well as tap it in a second operation. Well, I'll have a through hole to tap. There we go. Now I'm going to chuck these up where the bottom is coming out. Face that off, make sure we got a good surface on the bottom. And now I'm going to do is just cut in just a little bit until I get down to that center again. And that just uh, kind of makes a washer on the bottom of this and takes those corners out. Um, I just think that looks better and feels better when you're tightening, you're not dragging those corners. Now let's get a tap and see if we can tap this. So I got a tap in here now. I'm gonna put, lube that up real good. This is just sliding. I'm not trying to feed this in by hand. I get a lot of questions on that. Uh, we're just gonna let it pull itself in and we'll reverse it out. So um, I got my lathe slowed down and here we go. Power tapping. Let it feed all the way in. I 
I'll reverse my lathe. So the last step here on the screw is we need to put the slot in there for the screwdriver. I've got a slitting saw here mounted up over on my um, vertical mill machine uh, and I've got my screw set in here. Basically I took a couple of V blocks, clamped it in between there and again that's going to allow me to clamp it where it's going to hold it securely and square it up. So it's just a little trick you can use to anytime you're working with anything round in the vise and you want to put it in there. V blocks are a good way of doing that. So uh, let's see here. I want to slow this way down and I'm gonna come in and we're gonna pull this until it just touches off. zero my DRO. We got to go a total of 125,000 deep. I think I'm going to just do about 25 at a time and make a couple of passes here. So I'm going to bring it in 25,000 right there. Let me get some oil. And here we go. We're going to just take our time. That cutter's probably not running true. It didn't sound like it when I touched off. So nice and slow and easy. I'm going to try a 50 thou this time. I think it'll cut it all right. So I'm going to go to a total of 75 deep on the DRO. Take another pass. Nice, slow and easy. One more pass, we'll do another 50 thou. Go to 125 total, which will match the original. Right there. And there we go, I think we got it. And there we go, we got our hardware made and it's all ready to go back onto the machine. So let's get these two screws in. I have to wait for the studs to come in to put the uh, nuts on, but we'll have them when it's ready. And I think we can officially call this whole clapper box thing finished now. So we'll put, this is the original. And this is the one we made right here. And feels good. 
Well, there we go. I think we got uh, everything finished up here, and we're ready to move on to the next thing on this machine, which will probably be working on getting a uh, motor mount on here. I've got some figuring to do on how I'm going to do that. I got an idea, uh, but I need to get everything kind of drawn out and worked out uh, to do that. But getting really, really close now to making some chips with this machine after all this time. Guys, with that, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and that bell icon up there, hit it if you want to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, we try to put out some new content at least once a week, usually twice a week, and uh, share you what's going on out here at vintagemachinery.org. And uh, those comments and thumbs up are always appreciated as well. Guys, we will catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.